Even though we didn't get the end result we wanted in the time frame, it will happen. I promise you it's going to be spectacular. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I have no doubts. What's already out there is, like, mind-blowing. Last night, I mean, it's dark, and the two of us are sitting there just staring at it. I was like, I don't want to leave. But it's really cool. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. Good morning, everybody. We're back out here. It is Friday. For the first time, things really feel like a job site. So much momentum. Everybody's moving together. We've got big boulders being set. We've got deliveries showing up. Everybody seems to be in place doing something. I'm about to get ready to cut this stone. So I'm going to cut this. We've got to cut a little bit long. I'm going to cut it about an inch shorter than the top, which gives me just a little wiggle room underneath so I can shim it and get it perfectly level because the ground's not perfectly level. We're going to tuck it back behind this one we'll tuck it back behind this one and then because this wall isn't totally flat there's a little bump out we'll leave a little reveal they can put some mortar some moss whatever leave plants on that side leave a little bit of plants over here and we'll be good chris doesn't the energy just feel different today the vibe is definitely different i think that's what happens when we go to bed early <laughs> all right here we go that rock in here. We're gonna end up trimming this. We've left just enough of a gap in between the patio and the rock to mimic the spacing in between the tile. We've got our jets coming in right in through here. Chris is working on a jet that's coming out of the beach over there. We've got our sand. What I love about this sand is it's like a silica sand. So it's really, really kind of coarse. No dust or anything in it. It's gonna feel awesome. Even the coarse sand doesn't feel great on your feet, but with a two feet of water in here, it'll feel just fine. It just takes on a whole new look. So that sand's gonna come up in through here and then we'll beach it all the way up to that wall up in there. Almost done in this part. But boss man over there would like us to work on this later, so I'm gonna go start setting some boulders with these operators. Things are happening. It's midday Friday. Feeling fantastic on a Friday. We are killing it. So much stuff is going on. You've seen all this, but look at how much stuff we've gotten done today. All of this rock has been set today. This wall, we decided to just go with a black rubber paint over the top of the cinder block. Right now, they're putting on what's basically an activator, and then they're going to come in with a black water sealant. Again, you'll never really see it. You can see how far this deck is going to canopy route over everything. And it's just like bed liner that you put in your truck. A rubberized paint. And then when you come down in here and you really Really start paying attention to this rock work. This rock's awesome. Really angular, really easy to work with. Huge, giant pieces. We've got kind of the wetland framed out right in there, so that water's gonna move through this. We've got lights put in, accenting these boulders. Loving the progress. You can see Ralph and Jack are trying to button up the little channel. This is all gonna stay super narrow, which will actually help a lot with the current that's coming out of here and really force that water back that way towards the intake bay. Jack just always double checking, making sure we don't have gravel because one little rock can cause a pinhole. I'm so very mad right now. Oh no. There's, you can explain oh to God. your viewer what it's like with foam on your fingers. It's you almost just, like it's your first pond or something. It was a rookie mistake. Stuck my fingers right into the foam and this is what I have to live with the next week. <laughs> we finally have rock. Look at the selection we get to play with now. So we are flying. Once we got our boulders, we were able to keep both machines running, this machine and that machine, and just really start doing what we do best and rocking this thing in quick. We're gonna finish off this channel here and we're gonna move over to the wetland and I believe these super sacks that are coming are actually our wetland gravel. Yeah, today's a good day.
right guys, I thought it'd be an important time to kind of show you the behind the scenes of what goes into these large projects. So luckily Seth had a gate this big that trucks can come in and out of, in and out of, in and out of. Without this type of access, none of this could have happened. But look at all of the pallets. These are the pallets that are left over from all the boulders that have come in. You've got every little nook has a pile of something in it. You've got different aggregates. You've got rollers. You come down here, there's our bridge stone. We've got leftover rock. This is all the rock that came that we couldn't use in the meantime to make sure we don't clog up, you know, a main artery over there that gets us back into the job site. This was another load of stone. We did not order all this flat stuff. So where can we put this until they can figure out where can that stuff go to get rid of it? And then you go back behind the water feature. We have a staging pile just for fill gravel. We have staging areas where stone that we're going to be using. We've got berms piled up over here. We have accidents <laughs> over here. We've got random piles of rubble that need to get rid of. You've got pipe laid out all over the place. Trenches being done. Machines being tucked away to stay out of the way of this machine. It's just a war zone. So remember that this is what it looks like before the end when we plug in the pump. <laughs> all right, guys, we're getting back at it. We still have a lot of work to do. It's Saturday and we're here alone because they don't work Saturday past 12. We're here tomorrow by ourselves. We're going to see what we can do the next two days without operators and some extra hands. Wish us luck. Like you have been chime back in on Monday and show you guys what kind of progress we made. Have a great weekend. on waterfall builds. What you want to do, so this waterfall is really only about 18 inches high from the viewing area, but on the back side, it gives you an idea of that elevation and that drop off. Look at the size of this boulder that you got it put in place to help hold that elevation. So what you don't want to see, the finished product dropping this quickly, but it's impossible to stay held up like that. Either back it up with large boulders or you slope it out really far so it has that natural undulation. Rob, that's so important. Just keep that in mind guys when thinking of your berms and the height of your waterfall. Keep the waterfall to scale with the property. Think about the repercussions of going too high and all the extra work that may or may not have to go into it. Thanks Ralph. I love that tip for our viewers. Now is the time to update you guys on the week at Aqualand. I'll start with when I talk to Ed. Oh Ed. Yeah. Hey, what's up with the tanks? Bad news. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke with the guy six to eight weeks back order. Oh, it's not the end of the world, but you know who's going to freak out if we say oh, six to eight weeks? I know exactly who's going to freak out. The guy that like lives yeah. over in <laughs> the world. Now. Very familiar with that yeah. guy. We've got fish wanting to come in at the end of the month. Oh, so I thought we had more. Oh, they want to drive the fish down. Like I can probably push them a week or something, but uh -huh. not, not a month. Not a month. Yeah, I guess there have been, like all of us, a labor shortage. But it's plastic. Don't you just like throw plastic into it? They house? are, but they need people to pull the machines off off and on and all that stuff and he said he doesn't have people right now so we need to figure out something a tank of some sort um i don't know those okay. containers would have been perfect they would have been perfect i got an idea i got this <laughs> I got right. i'm gonna bail this fool out again one more time now for some good news we actually managed to install our koi window for the tank now that's exciting. <laughs> Silicone going on the wood. It just means one more thing is being done to finish our new Koi home over here. So the Koi window is going back in. I'm hoping sooner than later the Koi go back, which would be really, really important. Let's just kind of watch this. It's really pretty easy. It's like hooking up a skimmer box. But you can see Ed down here putting it all together. You got the rest of Team Aquascape there. So here's some of the hardware. Just these custom flanges that have been made. Those are gonna go on there. The liner goes up in between and it just gets all sandwiched together. The key is to not move that around so that silicone bead doesn't weaken. And then these flanges will just get bolted right to it. All 
right guys, it's been a bit since we updated our maintenance accounts. Last time we were here, we just talked about the mailing going out, the excitement of the different packages, how we try to get this stuff out early so we can start organizing everything. I do remember giving Haley a small project to give me a whiteboard, which I see. This is exciting to me. So this is the number I really look at. 234 cleanouts at $714,000. That's really exciting. And for us, it's exciting because this time last year, we hadn't even done our mailing. We were just talking about doing our mailing and doing our email blast. Be this far ahead allows us to schedule things that much easier. You can see the different size packages. We have diamond, platinum, gold, silver, browns, and spring clean out onlys. This number is gonna change quite a bit, but we are close to our 350 goal and definitely exceeding our number. As that number continues to go up, then we really need Haley and maybe the help of some other people to start organizing all these. So we have different suburbs around the Chicagoland area. There's the west suburbs, the north suburbs, the south suburbs, down in the city, and we need to start organizing all these things by who are the diamond and platinum packages because they go at a certain time of the year, yes? Yes. Like usually second, third week of April. We really have to organize all those things, which is like working a giant jigsaw puzzle because we still have to be efficient. What we try to do is make sure all these things are organized in one town. So we're gonna hit the west suburbs first and specifically like maybe Naperville first, then go do Downers Grove, then go do Burr Ridge, then maybe go do Orland Park. And we wanna try to knock out big towns all at once. But we'll take you in depth a little bit more and how Haley organizes all that stuff with the aid of some other people. So stay tuned guys, things are always moving around here. So that's enough to fill you in this week. Stay tuned and eventually we'll be out of Spain and back to Aqualand. Now, back to Spain. All right, so if you guys remember, this is a rock we picked out over a year ago, specifically for one reason. Do you remember? That's right, the bridge. This is gonna be our bridge stone. We're getting it strapped up. Chris has got it all leveled off over here. I'll show you what he just finished over in this spot. So we've got our base put in for our bridge. This is set two inches above water level. The reason we're setting it two inches above water level is because we need that small little air gap underneath the bridge. If the bridge were to sit in the water, it would totally stop all the circulation from wanting to come into this area. We want to pull that top two inches of water off the surface, cleaning it constantly. All the debris that hits the surface, we want pulled back into our intake bay where we can easily clean it out. All right guys, kind of a recap. Chris and I just finished setting this bridge right here. We've got some of the stepping stones in. This peninsula is all done and everything from here over is finished. Not the fire pit, but definitely from here over. The wall is done and part of this is done. So what we have left is this little intake bay back in through here and then the wetland filter and the waterfall. Chris, I feel like we're making some progress. We are. And it looks amazing. <laughs> so there's the bridge. Bridge is all set. We got it all leveled off. Off. perfect only thing we don't like we just set this rock and it's just feeling way too tall probably gonna take that guy put it on the back side over there and get some lower stuff in front we definitely want to get the rock higher than the bridge it helps hide where the bridge starts and ends aesthetically it always looks better if you can hide those two points but we just don't want something two feet taller probably like six to eight inches taller would work a whole lot better Busy, busy day today. We got so much stuff going on. It feels like crunch time. It's Tuesday. We have Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to start wrapping some stuff up out here. Right now, we're getting ready for water in the pond, which just seems like a huge, huge milestone. Uh, we got Jack and those guys down here kind of laying out some of the cobbles. We've got three types of gravel. We got this, this bigger stuff, which is like a three inch to four inch type cobble in here. You can see where we've painted out some lines. We want to kind of do a transition transition between the big stuff and some small stuff. This is the medium stuff right here, which is closer to like an inch. And then we have some like quarter inch stuff that's gonna cover the whole bottom. The reason we're going with such a small, small gravel on the bottom is again, it's a rec pond. And um, just the idea of the kids and their feet and everything else, standing on this big stuff all over the place would be miserable. Standing on this kind of stuff isn't as friendly for adults. And so we're gonna use this small, small stuff on the bottom. The other thing I love about the black gravel 
gravel that's going on the bottom of the pond is it makes the pond look really deep. That black just kind of reflects the other thing that looks really cool is when you have your koi or your different types of fish swimming over the top of it, how fantastic those colors pop off that black gravel. I also kind of feel like we've made up for some of the time that we lost. Still don't know if we're gonna finish. There was just some things out of our control in the beginning that slowed us down. I think we'll have it running. I know we'll have it running. I'm just not sure about that waterfall. That waterfall is a two-day excursion all by itself and that's us really really doing things smooth and efficiently and things like that out here just don't always happen. So wish us luck. You guys have been wishing us luck the whole time and we'll see how far we get. Bye. Water's going in. That's about 2,500 gallons of water. We think that'll be probably just enough to fill up the bog. He's gonna need like like eight loads. <laughs> Easy. Eight? <laughs> Easy. This is every bit of a 10,000 gallon pond, plus the intake bay, plus the stream, yeah. How are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> We're looking at our last full day of construction, right? There's some good things going on. Of course, we want to be finished with the project, but that's not going to happen. So what we're going to do is focus on getting it so this pond can be completely filled and run minus the big set of waterfalls. Water trucks have been running since yesterday. We should have this filled up today. Number five. We're on truck number five. So 12, that's, that's uh, 12,000 gallons. That's going to be over 12,000 yeah. gallons. So it's going to hold a lot of water. What I'm excited about today is the fact that we can actually run the small waterfall. We can run the jet. We can run the wetland if the electrician shows up. Yeah. Mm. What, what did Seth say? He got spained last the night. The electrician <laughs> tried to spain him last night. He's like, can't I just do it Friday? He's like, no, absolutely not. So hopefully he comes through and actually fires up the pumps. That would be excellent because then the system will be running while we're gone before we can get back there and finish this thing 100%. Awesome. So like he said, some great things are happening. The whole project is looking amazing. We could talk over and over and over and over about all the different obstacles that we've had since we've been out here, but what's the point? We're having a great time. It's looking incredible. Like Jack said, there is a real possibility we don't finish this thing. But if we can get something running until we can come back, that would be great. It would make me feel better because there's nothing worse than not seeing it run. So we're going to give it a big old college try this morning and see what we can get done. Here we go. Guys, what on earth are we doing? Oh, well, we decided late in the job that this tree is going to become a problem. It's shedding dirt and all kinds of junk like crazy. It'll clog up the sand in this beach. It'll make it look terrible. So as much as it hurts to take down a mature tree, it has to go. It'll get replaced with something else. Seth is okay with it. Ash is okay with it. So these guys are now here to take this down. We've got to cover all this finished work that we have so it doesn't get full of junk. So not the best time to take it down, but better well, now than never, right? Better now than this becomes clogged up with garbage. When's the best time to take down a tree? Yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> When's the second best time? <laughs> Today. <laughs> I always feel guilty about taking down a tree. It is a beautiful tree. It is just super messy. Okay. And my thought on when we take stuff like this down, as long as we replant three more, we're doing our job. And we can make this look beautiful with a different landscape theme kind of over in this area. Just like that, a tree is gone. I think it was probably smart for us to tarp the pond. <laughs> oh my God, that's crazy. Oh my God, it feels so good. It's our last day. Waterfalls are running behind me. But we're just gonna spend the rest of the day kind of buttoning things up. We've got just a few more hours. I'm gonna kind of turn you around. You can see overnight just how clean the beach area got. Looks great. We've got jets running here, down in there. We've got a little one for the kids to kind of play with. The sand bottom looks amazing. It makes the pond look transparent. It doesn't even look like there's water in this. The waterfalls turned out so good. Of course, the whole thing's gonna look better when this thing all gets planted. Everybody's creating things 
out. Chris is over there working on lights. We got the whole concrete area done. Our liner comes up right in through this little area. So hopefully when we come back, we get to see what this deck looks like. But look at how clear this is down to the bottom. That's four feet deep and it looks like it's 18 inches. Bay's already collected a ton of stuff back in here. Chris is working on some electric. A little different, huh? A little bit, yeah. I actually like the boxes, though. Mm -hmm, I do, too. Keeps it clean and neat and interesting. Things look fantastic over in here. All right, three more hours. We'll do a final walkthrough and show you what we get to look forward to by the end of the day. We almost made it. It's hard, right? It's just so hard. We busted our butts. I mean, dark to dark every single day. We know 100% we need two to two and a half days to finish this thing up. So that's gonna be another trip out here. Hopefully I'm able to come. If I can't come, maybe Chris can come, but I've got to show you what this thing looks like running. What I really wanna show you is what it looks like now, cause it's actually pretty awesome. You guys know how much I love turning on that pump. We're not gonna be able to do that, but there's still some really, really cool parts that we want to show you. So here we go. to show you guys is that view from the front door. So just imagine coming into this house, looking out just past those windows is gonna be that yes. waterfall. But even though they're not running, look at how this unbelievable water feature just pulls you outside. Wow. Seeing that water right from their kitchen table. Can't imagine there's gonna to be too many meals eaten here compared to out there. Way. It comes right up to the foundation of the house. And then check out this sand beach. The kids just absolutely love. You can see their little baby footprints in there. They love playing with the jets. Clarity is insane already. You can see that jet moving the sand. Hopefully, next time we come back, there's about 100 footprints through all this. That way I know the kids love it. But perfect little waterfall. This waterfall was not to be really elaborate. Just kind of a peaceful, tranquil setting right off this lanai space. And then pulled you over this this way through that canal got rid of this big tree which was gonna cause all of that debris falling in here now they can do a much more tropical theme in here kind of hiding part of this I love when things are hidden and you don't see the whole thing from one viewing area and even the design of the house helps with that a lot so as this all gets filled in with plants it'll look amazing we have this a little aquatic plant section right here height back in there that fire pit pathway will come from there and then be sunken way back out in there then you come around on the side over here. They're gonna get that deck cantilevered out over the whole thing, which is gonna take it to a whole new level. Just cannot wait to see that come together. And then by far, my favorite part is the space back in here. I think it just turned out so awesome. It's so much fun putting those stepping stones together. Chris and I rocked that out pretty fast. Love that this invites everybody over. You see that bridge that invites them. They don't even really know what the bridge takes them to, but once they get there, they'll see that they can use these stepping stones down below. Well, you guys let me know what your favorite part is. It was an honor to come out here and give Spain their first aquascape ecosystem pond. Literally the first one ever in all of Spain. Thanks for joining in. I look forward to coming back out here, sharing with you the final pictures of this thing, all landscape, deck in, waterfalls done. So stay tuned for next week's video where Chris goes back to Spain. I'm so jealous, but he's going back with Jack, Alan Decker. They're going to finish this thing off. I can't wait to show you the reveal. Hey, you guys know what to do. Like always, subscribe, comment, tell me your favorite parts, and we'll keep doing this. See you soon.